But yeah. you have a sister until you're like eight, nine years old. Oh, okay. Yes. So, yes. you know, Javon, this could open up to several sessions with black men fathers. You could be a man. I'm here for it. Well, I mean, yeah. even just the first thing that he said, it, it, I don't know if you noticed it, but it's like, we all operate from the deficit model. Fam. Welcome to Siobhan JTV. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's been a while and I promise I have not left you. I have been working on some great content for this channel and it just so happens that it's already now. If you are new to my channel, I'm sharing content that is wrapped around family, travel, community, and health and wellness. And we are having conversations, y'all. We are having thought-provoking conversations that are motivating and inspiring. If you have been with me, been rocking with me, I appreciate you. And so, you know, the last few videos that I posted on my channel were conversa conversations with Siobhan and her aunties. And we talked about motherhood, love and marriage. And in the comments, I got a message from a man and he was like, where the fell is that? So here they are. I have a panel of beautiful, great, active fathers who are going to share and bless us with their perspective of fatherhood, black male fatherhood, which is a topic that is so underrated and I came to this because you all know that I have a daughter, I'm a co-parent, and shout out to my co-parent who actually could not be with us today because it's his weekend with our baby and he is spending time with her. So I appreciate you, Antoine. Thank you so much. Um, but while I was pregnant, I was looking for things just for him, like to read, and I could not find a lot of things. Um, so I'm like, why, why is this? So I, I know black fathers, right. Who are in their children's lives, who are very active. Why well, can't I find material, you know, on this subject? So I was like, man, I have to create something, um, so that these men have a platform to share their stories. So Without further ado, I'm going to make some introductions to these very special men in my life. Yes, I do know them personally, so they aren't people that I just saw on the street walking. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make some... What you say? <laughs> Who are you? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to make some introductions, and this is in honor of Father's Day, guys. I think that it's a very special holiday that we should celebrate the men in our lives. And so the topic of today is parenting from a black male's perspective. So to my right, I have Mr. A.C. Jenkins. Ace, he's an entrepreneur, he is a husband, he's a father, and he happens to be my first cousin. <laughs> so we have him here, and we have Mr. Tondra McCluster T here with us. And T and I, we have a very special relationship because I've known him for, what, 15 years now? And it just so happens that my co-parent is his cousin. So, um, my, my baby is his cousin. So we are family. Um, his wife is my business partner, um, heart out to Kiana. And, um, thank you so much for being here. Shop my suppressor. Shop my <laughs> Look at you. So we have over here to my left, Mr. Emmanuel Aubrey, AKA Tony. He's also my first cousin. So. Tony and Ace are brothers, and um, again, entrepreneur, um, minister, and I'm so happy, father, I'm so happy to have you here today. And we have Dr. Chris Warren, Chris, who I've known Chris for the past, what, six, seven years now, professionally, and um, great community activist, um, has 
great material for black fathers, black families, um, a great man. I have had the privilege of talking to each and every man just about life, about parenting, about dating. <laughs> <laughs> about dating um, and you know I just feel so honored to get that counseling you know what I mean because you can't it's hard as a woman to have men in your life to be able to call and say hey listen I need some advice advice about business just to where to move so they are going to share their experiences as fathers and they have such a dynamic um, perspective of fatherhood. So that's the first question that I want to start with. I want you guys to give us just a little brief um, explanation of how, what role your father played in your life. We'll start with Ace. Um, my upbringing was uh, influenced to my mother. My father's relationship, her and my father's relationship was uh, not there. So my mother raised me, and uh, there was some influential uh, family members, uncles around, but, and then your teachers and coaches in your life that you drew, I drew to. Uh, was my start. Thank you. Uh, so for me, um, while my father and I Later in life, I built the relationship. Um, he wasn't there in the beginning. Um, I do value what we have now, um, but I also miss what we could have. Mm -hmm. Tony? Um, <clears throat> so I never knew my father. Um, uh, my mother was my, you know, I, I used to always say my mother was my father and my mother. Uh, because even on Father's Day, I used to give her cards and things of that nature because I never knew my father. Now, just like my brother, I had uncles and other male figures, you know, that I kind of looked up to. But as far as in the household, I never knew a man in the house. You know? mm -hmm. Wow. I feel like I got to round it out. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. But interestingly enough, um, I have other siblings, and I was the only one my father didn't raise. So that had a very different dynamic in how I viewed myself growing up. Um, like as as today, in today's young people, their generation, I would be known as a side beat. And so I didn't understand that growing up. You know, I was like, you know, my dad is a great dad to these five other people. He's an amazing dad. You know, they're with him. They do all sorts of things. But it's like, I don't get to kick it with him. I, why come, you know, I don't get to be with my dad. Um, so we have, of course, cultivated a relationship later in life. Um, but I was very much the same. It was all about my uncles. And uh, I had cousins that were uh, very, very much older than me. Um, so I thought that they were uncles when I was young, but uh, <laughs> they were just cool older male cousins. Yeah. Uncles and cool older male cousins. Yeah. So the next question wrapped around that, um, how, what did you guys pull from? So we have, we, I know cousins and uncles, but now that you are, you know, you're in it, you know what I mean? How, what was your reference? What did you pull from without having that father in home and parenting your children now? It's not cool to say, but man, I, I wanted to be a Bill Cosby dad. Like yeah. when I was young and I was watching TV, I thought like a black dad was Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. And then when I was a teenager, it was Uncle Phil. <laughs> So I always, you know, and then in my own life, there were black men in St. Pete who I thought were amazing fathers. You know, James Lawson and Willie Felton and Charlie Williams. So like I saw other amazing husbands and dads, but I was like, okay, like that's it. I would look at it and watch it and say, when I get my chance, that's that's what I'm going to be. I would say um, my biggest influence on fatherhood 
I turned the negative to a positive. So disappointment. Mm-hmm. The things that I didn't share with my father, um, I wanted to do with my kids. So I know that I know that feeling, I know those things. Um and secondly, uh second of all would be my uncles, my family, my friends, um, my brothers, a couple of my brothers had kids, you know, even though I was the oldest, they had uh, kids before me. Mm-hmm. Um, and my cousins as well, you know, as young, and but they were still fathers to, to, to their kids. They was always active in their lives. So you just pick up on lessons like that, like, damn, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? Or when I get in that situation, I kind of want to handle it like that. Um, but the biggest influence for me in fatherhood to Elijah and Zoe is, uh, was disappointment, you know. Mm-hmm. I, he never took me fishing, you know. I don't share that with Elijah, you know. Uh, he and Siri scored my first touchdown. I shared that with Elijah, you know, those things. So that's that's how I do it. Oh. As I say, you must be a pretty cool father. My my oldest son name is Elijah. <laughs> 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 but I took I took my cues uh, early on from coaches, right? You know, being in the you know sports and stuff like that. And then uh, later on, it was more so you know my uncle having you know my cousins as kids and just you know seeing him be a father. Um, uh, my, um, you know, past my um, old pastor who has gone to be with the Lord, he uh, was a real big influence. Um, you know, certain certain men in your life, you you, you don't want to let down, right? You don't want mm. them to, you know, kind of see you, you know, not uh, do things uh, along the paths that you should. And so those are two, you know, my uncle Michael and, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Clark Williams, man, those my my dudes, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, any other dude could see me whatever way they wanted to see me, but those two had to, you know what I mean, you know, I had to earn their respect. So, you know, those are two, uh, you know, big ones for me. Yeah. I share the same, the shame, same sentiments with you, with Uncle Mickey, not wanting to let him down. That's a good one. Uh, it's uh, very <laughs> Interesting because we we're, we're speaking about the same person, right? <laughs> this, this right. Sort of had an influence influence on, on all of us yeah. at different points. I I made Uncle Mickey Uncle Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all my mother and brothers became aunts and uncles when yeah. I showed up, and yeah. grandma became a grandma when I showed up. So I was the prince of the family, and for you know until. You know, your cousins came up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that A stand for the one. I get it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That is so funny. So, you know, we're the same, close to same age and everything. So, we're brothers. They, 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 the older folks treat us like brothers and sisters. Right. Um, so, Uncles in the family were first because they were there. Um, coaches came in right after that. And then uh, some of your parents' friends who were married. You know, mom, friends who, who were married. You've seen that father and had that Bill Cosby flair to it. Uh, that unity, that, that unit that, that didn't have. A lot of confusion because you're thinking, what's wrong with you when you see dad with his other family? You yeah. feel like you're the bastard kid. I was in the same thing. My sister was across the town. Grandma house was the meetup spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't know you had a sister until you're like eight, nine years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. So, yes. You know, Javon, this could open up to several sessions with black men fathers. It could be a thing. I'm here for it. Well, I mean, even just the first thing that he said, it, it, I don't know if you noticed it, but it's like, we all operate from the deficit model. Right. But right. My situation, my sibling, you know, we grew up in the same projects and we always knew we were siblings. Like, yeah. I remember my sibling's mother, you know, calling me my brother man. And I'm like, that's not me. That's not me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, um, but I can I can say that all that, you know, played a part in the person that I became, the father that I became. Yeah. Um, and what's strange is that we all, all, Four of us, you know, look to our uncles. Um, so a lot of times they don't know the part that they play in, in, in our lives. And, um, mm-hmm. You know, being an uncle to my brother and kids, like, 
they had kids before me. But whenever I went over there, um, I made it a point to give the kids, you know, five or ten minutes of my time. Whatever we got, we got a whole life. You know, I'm gonna punch them. I'm gonna wrestle with them. You know, mm-hmm. y'all already know that. When I walk in the door, I got to deal with the kids. Oh, I'm here. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. deal with us later, you know, because yeah. we, we got forever, right. you know. Hmm. Um, so that was just my thing, you know, and and still to this day, you know, I got a, I got a nephew at Florida State. Um, shout out to Jane on my cluster. Um, you know, I'm still walk up to him, I'm punching the chest, you, you know, that's just, that's just <laughs> what, you know, that's, that's just my thing. Yeah, you know? that plays so much and it, it adds so much to who you are. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, every year, the Christmas party, right? The right. pajama Christmas right. party, right? right. So, uh, and I hope you don't mind sharing this, but it just plays to who you are as a father, right? So I, I call it time like a day one. So you're a day one father. So you and Kiana are married. Y'all have kids together. Um, Elijah and Zoe, right? So at, I was watching you at uh, last December at the pajama party. And I believe it was you and Fee, like the only fathers there. But you had on your elf um, pajamas, like I'm here. I am here. Aunt is here. Daddy is here. And you didn't go. You didn't come and go. It was like, I'm here. I'm with my family. I hear your wife speak, talk about you. And she said, wake up in the night. She just, he just doing stuff. He just doing stuff for our family. But it speaks so much to who you are and how much like you pay attention. And, and it's intentional about like being there in your presence. The the feeling, right? I would never uh want Elijah and Zoe to have the feeling of the hurt and disappointment that I feel. Right. So as much as I can chill them from that, um, you know, that's my biggest thing. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, my father, they both had me when they was young, 15 and 16 or 16 and 17 or whatever. Um, and people make mistakes, you know? Um, but one thing I can't say, uh, my mother never told me anything bad about it. Mm-hmm. Never I asked questions. Mm-hmm. You will find out on your own. You have to be a judge. You know, I don't know why. Why is that so important? Because she wasn't bashing the black man who, who gave me life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which way to stay there. You have to understand how beautifully unique that is. Because mm-hmm. a lot of boys, their mothers don't realize that as they destroy the father, they destroy they're destroying the black man that's within that black boy. Yes. I mean, how he's going to see right. himself. Right. So, like I said, it's the deficit model, right? A lot of black fathers, it's positive and negative to both sides, right? right. Everything. So on one hand, so deficit, like we're building off of what wasn't there. Like, I don't know how to be a dad. I'm just going to look at all the things I missed right. and I'm going to do those things. And the number one thing is, that's I'm going to be present. Right. Mm-hmm. right. My dad wasn't there. Like, I don't know what happens right. when I'm there. But I'm gonna be there and then figure it out once I'm there. So that that in one way it's good because we don't limit ourselves. We just go, I, I'm gonna do everything. Right. Because I didn't have anything, to I'm gonna do everything. <laughs> right. I don't have right. this limited model like some people grow up with dads and go, I'm just gonna be just like my dad. I mean, what if their dad wasn't great? But for most black men, we didn't have that picture. So we're going to say, right. So we're going to say, you know what? Black fatherhood is everything. I'm a, I'm, if I got a girl, guess what? I'm going to do the period talk with my daughter. Because I don't know that you don't do that as a man, right? I'm going to do right. I'm going to tell us what we should be doing. And, 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 and you want to live up to those standards, too. Yes. But when you say being present, is that every time that you hear it, that you overheard your mother talking to her girlfriend or her sisters, Mm-hmm. About your father, or, the, or your other sibling's father, mm-hmm. it was about time. Mm-hmm. Most of it was about time. time, not the money. It was he don't ever get him. Right. I can't. I can't do nothing. I gotta call off of work. You know, right. help. I, I, help. Help. Yes. Help. yes. Yeah, I just okay. You you ain't got twenty dollars, but just. Just take him up. Take him. Take him. Take him. Not but only is help, it's a help in projects, <laughs> and not only help and, and help, Time but it's also well. it goes yeah. to help not just financially. And yes. I can only speak for myself yeah. as a mother yeah. uh, and, and a co-parent to uh, you know a black uh, male. It's not just help financially, but it's to help with decision making. Yes. You know. Uh, you it's know. Tough. We're okay. 
Like we're okay. Should I? It's fine, right? Um, but I'll have to say, as a woman, frankly, I get tired of making all the decisions, right? I'll also say that we're dabbling into some of my questions, which is very good. And the other question, and I want the I, I, women before, there. Before we go, yeah, yes. Piggyback on that. You have to. You can only make the decisions that's inside your household. So right. if he was in your household, he has a voice. If he's not in your household, how is some outside counsel going to run your house? So not much. So I, it not not as decision making as like day to day, and you know what I mean. Like I, I kind of school I have stuff. That. Cyber stuff, after school yes. program, summer yes. program, yes. you know, acti- like those, those, those decisions that those, you make. Those decisions. Yeah. Now, if I, you know, was with someone else and a partner, I wouldn't look so much to him, uh, him to help me make those decisions because I, I have this man in house, right? But I do, and I want to create a habit of including him on decisions that that involve his daughter right i i can't understand that um, yeah you know. so in time as far as far as time and i think my women out there please comment in, in the um uh, comments and let me know what you all think let's talk about time because i think that a lot of women like sometimes think but i mean they don't, they don't want to spend time with their kids they don't, you guys just confirmed that time is one of the most precious things to spend with your kids now and because you really didn't have that time with your fathers, right? But now but you have to talk about the perspective and the value of black fatherhood from the legal perspective. The assumption is you don't want to be a father. So they're going to approach you always about the money. Any man that's going through any type of custody situation with their child in the state of Florida, they know that they're being faced with a judge that's assuming they don't want to be with the child and they're immediately attacking their finances. <laughs> so when you look at a personal perspective, the, you may want to be with the child and spend that time with the child. But on the other side, they're pressuring you to pay all this money. You need to have to pay all this money for very little time. But I have to pay more of my personal money and court fees, legal fees, to get the time when the judge just let me off the hook by paying the money. So you end up in a place where you're like, okay, do I just pay this money and end this and just whatever it is? I don't get to be the father I want to be, but I'm tired of going to court. I'm tired of fussing. I'm tired of arguing. I'm tired of trying to figure this thing out. Or do I want to put my salary and my financial well-being on the line and continue to go to court and continue to fight so that I can get time. So the question is, are they enticing you to be a better father or they're enticing you to be a financial? They're ti- they're enticing <laughs> you. I'm glad you put it like that, right. my brother. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> but they are, they are pushing the, the idea of fatherhood as one that is purely financial. So you have a lot more men that are saying, oh, when I gave you money, that, that get out my face, yeah. right? So it's, yeah. you have these two sets of our competing ideas. You got cognitive dissonance, two opposing ideas. I want to be a father. I want to spend time. But the mama wants money and the judge wants me to give her money and they want to take away the so, time. So I just, all right, you know what? Let me just please everybody. Let me just give you this money. Like, don't ask me not get out my face. Don't yeah. talk to me. Don't ask me for nothing. The judge then told you I have to give you a third of my check or more. In certain situations, don't call me by nothing. You got the check. So, so Chris, the the, the, the true question is, is uh, why, when we go our separate ways, do the female feel like they have to run down to the court system with those that are willing to be providers? Well, number one, wait, wait, wait. Well, number one, number one. I won't. I, I'll say this because it goes. It goes. But there's a, there's a long way. No, I say there's, there's a broad there's a broad wise. spectrum. There's a broad spectrum for sisters, right? I, I'll give some sisters, the sisters some grace on this. Like you have some that if they don't go down there, let's be real. Some of us will absolutely use That's an opportunity. Good. Right, 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 right. No, I just have to. I just have to say. It. I just have to say. It. It, 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 you gotta. You got. Yeah, you got to because guess what? This is a table of the good fathers, right? But I'm not going to sit here in front like I don't know some brothers that are absolutely trying to escape responsibility. So 
do I knock sisters from running down to the court because they're like, okay, if not, I got to do this by myself. And this right. is terrifying from a financial perspective, from a time perspective. Being a single parent is not the best. OK, so some are going to run down there for pure security. Like, I can't do this alone. You, you will leave me alone and you're not going to give me money. You got to do something. You help me make this child. You got to do something. Right. Now, on the other side, you do have some men that are like, no, let's work this out between us. You don't have. But there are also some sisters who do not care for that. If they like, if I can't have you as my man, I don't want you nowhere around. And you just going to give me the money to raise this child. Get out my face. Just send me the check. I'll raise this baby by myself. I'll get me a new man. I'll get me a stepdaddy. I don't want to see you. I just want to see your check. Yeah. So, I mean, you you have both sides. I asked my mother when we were, when I was able to have this conversation. Mm. Uh, you yeah. said it yeah. when you were able. able to have this conversation. It wasn't when you was young. No. <laughs> <laughs> You get whatever story that was right. like, you stick with it. But after you live and see things and uh, you put one and two together, so you have a sit down with mom and I said, yeah, how come you didn't put either one of our fathers mm-hmm. on this? I'm asking for my son's protection because I wanted new shoes. We saw I wanted I wanted real potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> This is not big ladies. These are rats. These are not the retail. So I want to lay. I got rat snacks. I'm angry. I'm angry. Right, right. Don't get away. She said we're gonna be right. I'm here for so long. Right. Why did you? At that point. At that point. And I'm coming from a perspective from hearing. That's what you do. Put them on the system. So it's it's more of a learned behavior. That's what I learned. So I'm angry because I grew up without. And seeing him with his other family, I'm like, what? Having Christmas. Come on, yeah, yeah, and all the birthdays. All the birthdays. Come on. All the birthdays. Oh, I know all the birthdays. I know. I know. Yeah. 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 So Housewife. So let's talk about this because we didn't we didn't share this. So I called, you know, Tom said you were day one. You know, kids, marriage with Kiana. So AC. Hey, day one. Um, you know Nick. You know Nicholas with Tina, who is now resting in heaven. And so now you have this beautiful crystal, and you guys have a blended family, right? Blended family. So we have um, Tony, who married it, um, a woman with a child, a woman with a child, and who was already kind of in this co-parenting. You know, situation <laughs> from day one. Because how old was Money? Like two? Well, when y'all months. got married, she 10 months. months. She, she was two when we got married. Oh, wow. She she was was no, no, no. You, you the daddy, sir. Yeah, yeah. Two yeah. months? That yeah. is your child, yeah. sir. I took my hand. She's 25. She's 25. Yeah, yeah that's, your, that's your daughter. Right. Right. And that's she cool. was, you know, had a relationship with her dad. And then we have um, Chris, who has the, this co parenting relationship. Like, Again, day one. She had two kids. Two kids. Two. She had two. Boy Already. and girl. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. And so now, um, single father? Yes. You, you know? And so we have these interesting perspectives going on here. So you got so custody. No, I, have, I got 50 50. I'll take the picture for her. So I hate to break. Yeah, brother, that's a, that's a, that's a single dad right there. Okay. Because okay. okay. guess what? When I have her. I, 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 I don't mean to cut you off. I, I hate the term daddy, uh, big uh, daddy, me personally. Um, yeah, well, I'm to Zoe and Elijah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that comes from points. fathers of Elijah's because that's how I feel. No, I feel the same way. I remember Lawrence Fishburne telling them, you know, in the man can put his name in there, you know, you know, you know, and make a baby with a ticket real name. You know, that mm-hmm. and then remember the Titans in that scene when when the the white boy was questioning the black boy was like you do got a daddy right and it was like no I got a father that's right yeah that's right you that's how I feel saying? that's so how I feel I, I would never be termed that you know even to my wife whether we go our separate ways or whatever uh, you know I'm a father to a kid you know? but see that's by that's by function and responsibility yeah. you understand that right. I, a baby daddy. Question, but no, 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 don't understand. I, I'm just giving the term when you're talking like, oh, that's a kid dad. No, like, address me as a father. As a father. Sure. Of sure. them. But I'm saying that's, that's a term. people? 
that's what I'm saying. That's, 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 that's my function mind. and responsibility. Okay. You're yeah. saying I function as a father in this house, and my responsibility yeah. is as a father yeah. in this house. That's that's yeah. a, uh, the program that Siobhan and I worked on at USF was about co-parenting, mm-hmm. right? So it was we agreed, like, look, we have to get rid of this idea of the baby daddy because the baby daddy, the baby daddy doesn't have an expectation of responsibility. Right. The baby daddy doesn't have an expectation of accountability. Right. The baby daddy is the dude who come around and try to get some from the mama from time to time. And then, but the, right, right, right. And maybe leave a pair of shoes on his way out. But when we're talking about fathers, we want the expectation. If you're going to be unmarried, you can still be a father. You can still be a father. Yeah. So, again, attesting to that particular program, and, you know, not really, I, you know, should I deserve the best, right? And so I did not see my life as a, a co-parent. I knew I was going to be a great mother. I also knew, I, I also knew and know that I'm going to be a great wife, right? So... I became a mother first and it was my, you know, my goal and plan that we're, we're going to be together. Now things happen and we're not, and we are happy. Everything is fine. Like we're fine. Um, but these particular tools and skills from that, that program did allow me to see him as should I's father. Yeah. This and is her father. It, it, yes. it, it is. Yeah. That's his baby. And I and I right? think and I think when females have that conversation, um, because words are powerful. Mm-hmm. So once they separate those two things, and then if I come from us too, because we have to have those actions, you get what I'm saying? And and I for one, I know some dads, some family, some friends. Some enemies, some dudes, some people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some dudes. And, I, and I know a lot of great fathers. You know what I'm saying? That I, I, I pull things from. Um, here and there, sometimes I gave it a big prop, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I see stuff from afar, you know, and jot those down in, in, in my father's notebooks, you know, to, to imitate and copy and repeat. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So let's stay there. What is the number one thing you wish people knew? I should, I, people as in women knew oh, okay. about raising children as a man. Like, what's the number you, one thing? You know, the, it was interesting. You know what you said? You said, I know I'm going to be a great mother. Okay. Do you understand that in order for a man to honestly say that, he needs your help? Mm. A man can want to dedicate his life to being a great father. But if you're not in the house with the mom, the mom has to allow you in a lot of ways to do that. Mm-hmm. And that's a very, I see, I see. you understand what I'm saying? It's yeah. you, the woman has to be able to say, okay, let me take off this fake super mom facade and allow this man who I'm not in love with anymore to operate and be a great father the way that I allow myself to be a great mother. Oh, you know, that's that's maturity that's on her, her part, and it has to be maturity on his part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of uh, things she can't teach him how to be able to teach. Him. Oh, okay. Woo! Oh, no. You can raise a good human, <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. cannot raise a good man. And I think the evidence, the proof is in the pudding on yeah. that. When yeah. you look at the man around and they're raised by single women, there's some good humans, mm-hmm. but not all these brothers are good fathers. But I think even in that case, if you want to be, and you and what you said, and you're given an opportunity to be, mm-hmm. and you step up to that plate, mm-hmm. you can be. Because there won't um, be opportunity. I, 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 yes. I, <laughs> I mean, you got a mature woman that allows you to do that. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's yeah. no blueprint to it. It's it's just doing. And all great fathers come in. Ooh, stop because you wait, 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 don't ways. don't drown that beautiful point. Stay right there. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, don't drown no, bro. Stay right there. That's a hashtag, man. Take it up. Black fatherhood is hashtag action. You and that's the that's what that's what women have to understand, right? So with women, they are always gonna have the emotional upper hand on us, right? 
right? They, they have the hormones, they have the, the, pre, the genetic predisposition. You spent nine months with this child inside of you, you forming this box. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, well, my child prefers me. What, they were chilling out inside of you for nine months. I'm yeah. talking to the stomach, I'm singing songs, I'm rubbing bellies, but it was literally inside yeah. of you. Uh. Yeah. So you, Always as a father, you have to so understand. Birth, it's like they birth like. Eggs. Come on. That's why I say don't marry that beautiful boy, brother. Don't marry that beautiful boy, brother. That's beautiful. Hit that man's cup one more time. That's beautiful. Hit that man's cup one more time. That's beautiful. Hit that man's cup one more time. That's beautiful. Hit that man's cup one more time. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it does, yeah. it does, it does they take flourish, a mature woman to allow for that man who does not live in her house yes. <laughs> to be a father. And that's whew. And just like he was saying, like my thing is you can't allow people to project onto you. You can't allow people to project onto you what you want or what they want to project. So yeah. he wouldn't allow people to project daddy on him. I don't allow people to project daddy on me. To tell you the truth, I'm an anomaly. When I tell people I have four kids, the first question they ask, are they all by the same mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, like I said, my oldest daughter is, you know, you know, my stepdaughter. But the other That's three. Right. You can tell you these yeah. yeah. how weird it was for me to say stepdaughter. This might be the first time he actually he's he, saying that for the camera. Right. He was like, about, he was like, you just hit. <laughs> And her and I, we've had this conversation before. I never, ever, ever introduce her as my stepdaughter. It's so I, weird. I hate that. It, right. I we, hate that we, when a dude we, is introducing his family, oh, this is my wife and this is my stepdaughter. Hmm? Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's your daughter. Right. That tells me there's something you know going I mean? on. Don't, it's a disconnect. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, and if I see you as the daughter or, or step or the red hair step child, yeah. you probably going to act differently. Just well, and, then, and, and let me be clear. <laughs> And I say disconnect because you have known Amani. She was two. When we got married. Like when you got married. Like, like, like months, you, you know what I mean? Months. And so to to say, that's my stepdaughter, that's kind of like, ugh. I probably said that in the last 20 something years twice. And so you could tell the taste of it you when it came out of the Yeah, it ain't sour. Yeah, you can pass on that one. So, <laughs> let me. On the flip. On the ahead. flip. Uh, my blended family came into effect about five years now, and she came with a 13 and a 22 year old. Oh, so you was off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> but I was bringing my nine year old into the fold, oh, too. Right. Okay. So um, one day I wasn't there. He and my, my nine year old and Crystal had a conversation. He was like, Can I call you mom? You know, his mother had just passed, maybe. Eight months earlier. Oh, wow. And I'm listening in to see what her response was. And she said, I mean, you call me whatever it might be. She realized he's, he's grieving. Uh, I'm a woman in this life. Mm -hmm. And it was very big for me, to, for them to hit it off. It was very important. Um, it was young and mother of his life. Mm -hmm. Super important for me and her to hit it off because eventually these kids will be gone. And we're gonna see them together. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never had a, you know, my job is nine and her kids are 13 and in their twenties. So having a grown up kid, I'm, I'm looking at my brother, a different brother. He's got a, a newborn, a whole shiny baby. <laughs> so, uh, but everything that Nicholas and I needed Crystal and her boys had. Mm. And everything that they needed, Nicholas and I had. Mm. So see, let, now, let see, me, but so see, you have that, man. So but see, I'm, ter see, I'm right. terrified of that. So, How did you uh, even know? That, that, Dude, I'm, I'm terrified. Right there. My, I, daughter, my daughter is 10, man. Yeah. And she's, I, look, day one, right? Her mom and I were actually together when she was pregnant. So she's She's heard my oh, voice since she was in utero, right? Right, singing badly, Sam Cooke, right, <laughs> to her inside the bed. So she knows whose voice this is. But I can't even date because the woman I like may not necessarily be the best stepmom. And because of my daughter and I's relationship, you know, 
I don't want to taint that. Like, cause I had a horrible step situation, right? My step was like my my stepdad told me, like, look, I had two other sons, and I can't be their father, so I'm not gonna be a father to you, because that wouldn't be fair to my two sons who I can't be with. You know, because they live in another city. So how am I going to look being your daddy when I can't even be a father to my own kids? He told me this. I'm eight, nine years old. So I'm just I'm accepted. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't have to be loved. You good. You're right. You're totally fine. And I realized, like, the effect that had on my life. And so I look at my daughter. And, like, anytime my, my daughter even sees a woman, you know, she's like, oh, daddy. You know? And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I can't date because I have to look at it like I may like this person. But are they going to unconditionally love my daughter? But when you say that, well, let me, y'all are uh, jumping. Y'all are in my you, question. You, you, <laughs> you are in my question. She actually has your best interest. She wants you to seek love Go ahead, and be Ty. happy. Go ahead, Ty. You know, but That's her permission. You, 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 you being over conscious, over conscious of her situation. Yes. Because yeah. if if she's a girl, man, I understand. And I bring this woman. You have to understand from a from a girl. I got her. She's gonna look at. Yeah. Oh, why does daddy like her? I, right. I, what I, is I, it about her that made the daddy that I love and think like right now this is great. She's ten. You know how cool I am right now. I know I got like maybe two more years. Maybe two. Maybe two. Maybe two. Like I got I got I got two more sucker free years before she's like you like. Don't be kissing me in front of my yeah, friends, yeah, like yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. So, that I, that you. Oh yeah, I'm hilarious oh, right, right now. now. But I know I'm gonna be a sucker yeah. by 2024. Like I already know. That was going to be one of my questions because Chris Ace, you guys, well. You went through a period of, of just you and it. Look, you were a single father. You're a single pa- father. So to, you know, men out there, honestly, to women out there, what did you do and what steps did you take to trust love in here, right? And you got this one, Ace. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> what did what, what you say? Know. Because you, you were not, we, you my cat, we talk, right? So I'm in a place of being in a, of in, okay. I got only got 45 minutes on the call, right? (laughs) So, but but seriously, for the people out there, like, cause you you know we talk. I'm in a place. I'm like, okay, she got two and a half. We got our thing going. You know what I mean? I'm ready. I'm being. I'm intentional. I'm trusting who I am, and I I know who I am. I know what I'm like, right? So. I'm intentional about dating now, but I'm scared, right? So, what steps did you take? Um, coming from 30 year relationship. Right. Because you guys went what? In the eighth uh, grade? Uh, tenth. Tenth? Ooh. 86 to 2016. Oh, boy. Oh. 86. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, My friend told me when my wife passed that I was a, a company man. You, I wasn't a Hugh Hefner kind of fellow. You know, I, it, I'm only talking from uh, being single, new, and a new widower, and unfamiliar with the market out there. So his advice to me, you know, you're going to attract those women that you you just had. She, uh, she's the marrying type. She's a loving type. She's a hard worker. She's intelligent. Um, she, she, she thought I was. She thought I could do anything. <laughs> she thought I could do anything. So I can only imagine what she gave you. It's encouraging. Yeah. Like you just run through a wall. Oh man. Um, yeah. We all need one of those. Right. So when you lose <laughs> that, you, you think it. I, I want something like that. I've done it for twenty something. So he said, you know, you, you, that's how you are. And, um, and then there was a side to me that was in that grieving, I didn't want to stay in that grieving, I needed to heal and keep moving forward. Um, I had to open myself up to love again. At the same time, realizing I have some qualities. 
Come on. You know, I just right. I'm, I'm a good, I'm a good fella. I think my FICO score was a 700. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. I had to knock nobody over the head. You know, nobody's coming through my window. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm good. Nice people. Um, and I was I was trying to be the best father for my nine-year-old who just lost his mother. Mm-hmm. So I knew one thing. I didn't want to know these type of women running through this life. Mm-hmm. Didn't get that. I can explain this stuff later mm-hmm. on. Um, I think the opportunity when the same fellow was talking to me, he was like, I'm getting married in June, want you and you plus one come to the wedding. I need a shake up. Let's go to the wedding. Daddy well, needs you know, a reception. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Shake it up, you know, let's go to the wedding. Yeah. So we go to the wedding. It's and uh, um, he goes up to the mezzanine to play with these kids and their little computer thing, and I'm sitting down at one end of the table. And Crystal comes down and says, well, all the adults are down here. Why don't you come sit down here with run up? So little did I know she was luring me down to her table of friends who so had already scoped me out. For the job like, interview. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this oh, is oh, oh, the final yeah, interview. Yeah, and you don't even know. know. <laughs> they got who is the friend in the bottom of the chair. Who is the tall down there? Come on. Come on. I'm cool, I'm cool. So I gotta throw, I gotta throw a diversion, monkey wrench in. So I said, it's so loud. You know, can we go out to the garden? And oh, that's to oh, oh, you good. Oh, yeah, it is. In that situation, that. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, the name of the girl. An hour later, Nick comes up. He's dead about to cut the cake. So we gotta, we gotta go back <laughs> inside, you know. In that hour of speaking to her, man, I guess my heart, Lined up. Dated. <laughs> so basically, you telling me I need to start going to my weddings. <laughs> Seventeen months later, we got married. Wow! Seventeen oh, months oh, later. Come on. Come on. So let's talk about alignment. I know that one of the things you said uh, when when we were laying ten and the rest that you guys made your love. Oh. Your love. And that I will take that with me to the grave. I will take it. And I think I was like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? You made your love your love. So when you when you have that, like that thing don't disappear, right? Yeah, it's still it's there, right? But so now you have crystal and now you're making your love your love, right? Absolutely. Kiana. And so we're living moving organism, right? We don't stop. We're changing. So you have to have somebody there that is going to move with you through the changes, right? And you have to move with her through her changes. Y'all been together how long? Sometimes I wish I would have never skipped school that day. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like... It's it's perfect. I I don't even know. I think I've been when I was 18 or 37. You know, we share two kids together. Um, You know, I couldn't pick the best spouse. You know, I'm, I'm not perfect. She know my flaws. So, you know, we both go straight away, but we always made ourselves back to, you know, to each other. Mm-hmm. We got what we got, and what we got is what we got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Uh, so let me tell you this: how important, right, is Displaying your love to your kids, right? And I'm not just, but here, here's the thing: I'm not just talking about like um, to our spouses, to your spouses. To no, it's to the but kids. To your mother, no. to yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, to they are extremely women. lucky. Do you do you know how much it bothers me more so than anything? It bothers me more than anything. That because of this, I don't get to show my daughter what it's right, like to be right, loved right, by a black right. man. And that's like it is like it, to my 
model that for her. I want her to see me in love, love with a woman and treating her but like God. a goddess, right? You I'm like, that you that good. That, I treat her like that, but I need for her to see what it looks like in a relationship. Like, she's going to know. Now, look, she's like, when a man approaches her, she's like, well, my daddy does this, my daddy does that. But I need to, I need for her to see it. Well, they just when I'm having that word, no. which way the Lord, I need, I need some qualified applicants, man. I need some qualified applicants. They just said something. Come on, no. I, just, I need to go to some more weddings. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, so to answer, so to answer, so to answer your question, um, we 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 do this often, and our kids are so funny because they don't know a household without dad and mom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. next month will be twenty three married, twenty five together. So when, whenever we show affection or show love and stuff, even my oldest yeah. son, yeah. come on, he yeah. will yeah. hug over and wrap his leg around us. Y'all, you're right. I'm going to put up hand and turn around. You know, you got to think in the back of their mind. They love it. They love it. So, love and let me speak to that they because eat it up. since you've been, how old was I when I got, y'all got married? 12? Like 12, 13. 23 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like, you have always been like that with Keisha. Like, we'll go and move her hair out the way. And not because I watch y'all, y'all know I be watching everything. <laughs> move her hair out the way. Like, I remember when the last time I was at church. When we had. When we had the cookout. <laughs> Y'all was talking, and I just saw her looking at you like, you know, and I'm saying, wow, that's something. You know, that's taking a mental note. But yeah, Um, you want want a man to be looking at you like that 20 plus years from now. From now, yeah, Yeah. with the kids. Yeah, after the kid, right? After, after the kids, kids after like the fussing, you know I mean? after the bills, but you, but you have, it is a process of continual working on love. Right? Not just okay. I like you. We in this together, and we gonna deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. That's the job approach. I don't want to deal with nothing in my life. That, that's the you job know what approach. Too. I genuinely love Keisha Albright. Yeah. So my. That's your friend. You know, that's that's my friend. Like that's you know. Hey, I, I like her know. too. <laughs> <laughs> I learned I learned this word, and we all know it. But if we 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 do it to our partners, it'll take on a different meaning as you grow. You get uh, courtesy. Yeah. yeah. Grace. Yeah. True. And you know what's funny? I'm hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to hear what you do. Yeah, courtesy. Where do you go wrong with courtesy? <laughs> 